Right now, deep inside Edwards Air Force Base, something extraordinary is happening. A B-21 Raider just landed with only one human pilot in the cockpit. The second seat, filled by a weapon systems officer, while artificial intelligence, handles what used to require a full co-pilot. The Air Force just leaked an internal memo that changes everything we thought we knew about modern bombers. A single pilot, flying America's most advanced stealth bomber, backed by AI systems that can think, react, and even make combat decisions. This isn't some distant future concept. This is happening right now, and the implications are staggering. The leaked memo from August 2025 sent shockwaves through military aviation circles. General Thomas Boussiere, the outgoing commander of Air Force Global Strike Command, put it in writing. One pilot, one WSO. No traditional co-pilot, and hidden between those lines is the real story. An AI virtual co-pilot that's already flying in the world's most sophisticated bomber. Let's break down exactly what's happening. Welcome to Jet Insight, where we bring you the latest developments in American military aviation. If you're as fascinated by this development as we are, type PROUD in the comments below. The leaked memo, August 2025. A memo crosses the desks of the Air Force Secretary, the Chief of Staff, and the Commander of U.S. Strategic Command. General Boussieri doesn't mince words. He lays out exactly why the B-21 needs a revolutionary crew configuration. Unleashing the Raider's full potential demands a complex blend of skills. He writes, Airmanship, weaponeering, electromagnetic spectrum operations, sensor management, real-time battle management, and agile replanning in combat. That's not a job for two pilots anymore. That's a job for one pilot, one weapons officer, and sophisticated AI systems working together. Think about what that really means. Every B-2 Spirit currently flying has two pilots, both trained to fly the aircraft, both capable of taking control. The B-52 Stratofortress, two pilots plus additional crew members. The B-1 Lancer, same story. But the B-21 breaks that decades-old tradition, and there's only one reason the Air Force would make this move. They've achieved something remarkable with automation. The timing of this memo matters too. November 2025 marks two years since the first B-21 took flight. Two years of testing. Two years of proving that AI systems can handle the workload. And now, with the second test aircraft delivered to Edwards Air Force Base in September, the Air Force feels confident enough to recommend this revolutionary crew structure for operational aircraft. This isn't speculation anymore. This is official Air Force planning. But here's where it gets really interesting. Boussiere announced his retirement shortly after this memo leaked. Was it just coincidence, or was this his parting gift to the American people? A glimpse behind the curtain at capabilities that would normally stay classified for years? Either way, the cat's out of the bag, and what we're learning is extraordinary. What the AI actually does so what exactly is this AI virtual co-pilot doing? The Air Force and Northrop Grumman haven't released technical specifications, but we can piece together the picture from multiple sources. First, takeoff and landing. Commercial aircraft already have automated landing systems, but the B-21's AI goes far beyond that. It's managing the entire flight profile, from engine start to shutdown, takeoff, climb, cruise, even in-flight refueling, approach and landing all automated with redundant systems that can handle failures or jamming attempts. The pilot can override at any time, but the AI is constantly ready to take control if needed. Second, system monitoring. Modern bombers have thousands of sensors tracking everything from engine temperature to radar emissions. A human co-pilot spends significant time checking gauges, monitoring systems, and managing fuel consumption. The B-21's AI does all of that simultaneously, in real time, while also predicting maintenance needs and optimizing performance. It never gets tired, it never gets distracted, and it can process information far faster than any human. Third, sensor fusion and threat detection. This is where things get really advanced. The B-21 isn't just a bomber. It's a flying intelligence platform with sophisticated radar systems, electronic warfare capabilities, and extensive communications equipment. The AI absorbs data from all these sensors, compares it against a massive database of known threats, and presents the crew with actionable intelligence. Enemy radar, 
The AI identifies it, classifies it, and suggests countermeasures. Incoming missile? The AI calculates intercept vectors and recommends evasive action. All in milliseconds. But there's a fourth capability that the Air Force is barely talking about publicly. And it's the one that really changes the game. The B-21 can control other aircraft. Not just communicate with them. Actually command them. Stay with us. Because this is where loyal wingman drones enter the picture. And the future of air warfare becomes crystal clear. The loyal wingman connection. The B-21 wasn't designed to fly alone. It was designed to be the quarterback of an entire strike package. And those other players? They're unmanned collaborative combat aircraft, what the military calls loyal wingman drones. Picture a combat mission deep into contested airspace. The B-21 penetrates enemy defenses with its stealth characteristics. But instead of carrying every weapon it might need, it brings along four or five unmanned drones. Each drone has specific capabilities. Some carry air-to-air -air missiles, some have electronic warfare equipment, some are packed with precision-guided bombs, and some are essentially flying decoys designed to draw enemy fire. The AI Virtual Copilot manages all of them, say, coordinates their movements, assigns targets, and adjusts tactics in real time based on enemy responses. The pilot and WSO make the strategic decisions, where to strike, what to prioritize, when to abort. But the AI handles the tactical execution, managing multiple aircraft simultaneously, while the humans focus on the bigger picture. This is already being tested. Companies like Shield AI and Andril Industries have developed autonomous drones specifically for this mission. Shield AI's XBAT can take off and land vertically, operates without GPS or continuous communication, and uses artificial intelligence to make split-second decisions. Andril's YFQ-44A has flown as part of the Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program, demonstrating autonomous flight and landing controls that work seamlessly with manned aircraft. The mathematics of this approach are compelling. One B-21 costs roughly $750 million. One loyal wingman drone might cost 10 to 20 million. For the price of a single additional B-21, the Air Force could buy 30 or 40 drones. Those drones can take risks that manned aircraft cannot. They can fly directly into enemy air defense networks, absorbing fire and gathering intelligence while the B-21 stays at standoff range. And if a drone gets shot down, that's a $20 million loss instead of a billion dollar bomber and two highly trained crew members. This completely changes the calculus of air warfare. Right now, sending a B-2 Spirit on a high-risk mission means putting two pilots and a multi-billion dollar aircraft in danger. With the B-21 and loyal wingmen, you're distributing the risk across multiple platforms, most of which are unmanned. The enemy has to defend against six or seven aircraft instead of one. They have to prioritize targets, and while they're shooting at drones, the B-21 is accomplishing its mission. Before we dive deeper, please take a second to like this video and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs you nothing, but it means a lot to us why this matters now. So why is the Air Force making this move now? Three reasons stand out. First, pilot shortage. The Air Force has been struggling to train and retain enough pilots for years. Training a strategic bomber pilot takes enormous time and resources. If you can crew each B-21 with one pilot instead of two, you've effectively doubled your operational capacity. That one decision means the Air Force can fly more missions maintain higher readiness, and put more bombers in the air when needed. Second, mission complexity. Modern warfare isn't just about dropping bombs anymore. The B-21 is designed for electronic warfare, signals intelligence, battle management, and coordination of other assets. That's too much for two pilots to handle effectively, even with advanced automation. But one pilot handling the aircraft, one weapons officer managing the mission systems, and AI handling the routine flying tasks, that's a crew structure, optimized for 21st century warfare. Third, technology maturity. The AI systems needed to make this work simply didn't exist 15 years ago. Even five years ago, they weren't reliable enough for combat operations. But the technology has reached a critical threshold. Machine learning algorithms can now process sensor data faster and more accurately than humans. Autonomous flight systems have logged thousands of hours without major incidents. The AI can be trusted with critical tasks, freeing humans to focus on what they do best, strategic thinking, ethical judgment, and complex decision-making. There's also a competitive factor that can't be ignored, 
China is developing its own sixth-generation bomber capabilities. Russia has restarted production of the Tu-160 Blackjack, though they're falling behind. The United States needs to maintain its technological edge, and AI-enabled operations provide that advantage. An American bomber crew augmented by artificial intelligence can outthink, outmaneuver, and outfight any adversary. That's not propaganda. That's mathematical reality. The B-21 program has been remarkably successful so far. It's on schedule, on budget, and meeting or exceeding performance expectations. The first aircraft flew in November 2023. The second arrived at Edwards Air Force Base for testing in September 2025. Additional aircraft are under construction at Northrop Grumman's Palmdale facility. And critically, each aircraft is being built with the same open architecture system that allows rapid technology upgrades. As AI improves, the B-21 can incorporate those improvements without requiring complete redesign. Congress has taken notice too. In July 2025, they included $4.5 billion in additional funding specifically to accelerate B-21 production. That's on top of the existing budget. The Air Force initially planned to buy at least 100 Raiders. Now they're discussing 145 aircraft. Some analysts believe the final number could go even higher as older B-1 and B-52 bombers reach retirement age. The human factor. None of this means the Air Force is removing humans from the equation. That's a critical point that sometimes gets lost in discussions about military AI. The B-21's artificial intelligence is a tool, not a replacement. It augments human capability. It doesn't supplant human judgment. The pilot still flies the aircraft during critical phases. The pilot makes the final call on tactics and engagement. The weapons officer still manages targeting and coordinates with other forces. And both crew members maintain the authority to override any AI decision at any moment. The technology serves the humans, not the other way around. This matters especially for nuclear missions. The B-21 is being designed as a dual-capable bomber, conventional, and nuclear weapons. Nobody in the Pentagon, the White House, or Congress wants an AI making decisions about nuclear weapons employment. That will always remain a human responsibility. The AI can navigate, it can manage systems, it can coordinate with other aircraft. But the decision to employ nuclear weapons, that stays with trained, authorized human operators following strict protocols and direct orders from the National Command Authority. There's also a training consideration. The weapons officers flying in that second seat aren't just button pushers. They're trained to fly the aircraft in emergencies. If the pilot becomes incapacitated, the WSO can take control, fly the bomber, and get it home safely. That's standard procedure on aircraft like the F-15E Strike Eagle, and it's being carried forward to the B-21. The AI provides backup, but human redundancy remains built into the system. Some critics worry about AI reliability. What happens if the systems fail? What if enemy electronic warfare disrupts the automation? These are legitimate questions, and the Air Force has designed multiple layers of redundancy to address them. The B-21's AI systems are hardened against cyber attack. They use encrypted communications that can't be easily jammed. They have backup modes that allow degraded but functional operation, even if primary systems are compromised. And ultimately, the aircraft can be flown manually if absolutely necessary, though that would significantly reduce its combat effectiveness. The cultural shift is significant too. Older generations of military pilots grew up with the idea that they controlled every aspect of their aircraft. Trusting AI to handle critical functions requires a different mindset. But younger pilots entering service today have grown up with automation. They've used smartphones, driven cars with advanced driver assistance, and played video games with sophisticated AI opponents. They're comfortable with technology in ways previous generations weren't. For them, an AI co-pilot isn't scary. It's natural. What comes next? The B-21 program is moving forward rapidly. The first operational aircraft are expected to arrive at Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota by 2027. That's the first of three main operating bases that will eventually house the Raider fleet. Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri and Dyess Air Force Base in Texas will follow. Each base is undergoing massive construction to support the new bomber specialized hangars, maintenance facilities, secure storage for weapon systems, and classified briefing spaces 
The fiscal year 2026 budget includes extensive military construction funding for all three locations. This isn't planning. For some distant future, this is active preparation for aircraft that will arrive within two years. Training is ramping up as well. The Air Force is developing new curricula for B-21 pilots and weapons officers. The training emphasizes working with AI systems, managing loyal wingman drones, and employing the full spectrum of the aircraft's capabilities. It's a different skill set than flying a B-2 or B-52, and the Air Force is investing heavily in getting it right. For military veterans and aviation enthusiasts who want to stay connected to these developments, communities are forming where people share insights, discuss new technologies, and support each other's interest in American air power. These connections help us all stay informed as these remarkable capabilities continue to evolve. The Bigger Picture Step back and look at what this really represents. The B-21 with AI virtual co-pilots isn't just a new bomber. It's a new way of thinking about air power. It's the integration of human judgment with machine precision. It's the multiplication of force through coordinated unmanned systems. It's the optimization of crew composition for modern warfare requirements. Our adversaries are watching this development very carefully. They see American strategic bombers becoming more capable, more flexible, and more lethal, while simultaneously requiring fewer human crew members. They see artificial intelligence being integrated at the highest levels of military operations. And they're racing to develop countermeasures and their own equivalent systems. But the United States has a significant lead. The open architecture design of the B-21 means it can be upgraded continuously as technology advances. The robust testing program means problems get identified and fixed before operational deployment. And the partnership between the Air Force and industry leaders like Northrop Grumman ensures that the best available technology gets incorporated into these aircraft. This is American innovation at its finest. Taking a traditional mission, strategic bombing, and completely reimagining it for the modern era. Combining proven concepts like stealth and long range with cutting edge artificial intelligence and autonomous systems. Creating a weapons platform that will remain relevant for decades, capable of adapting to whatever threats emerge. Conclusion. The leaked memo from General Bussiere pulled back the curtain on a development that would normally stay classified for years. One pilot, one weapons officer, and AI systems handling what used to require a full co-pilot crew. The B-21 Raider is already flying with these capabilities, and it's fundamentally changing how America projects air power. This is just the beginning. As these systems mature and more B-21s enter service, we'll see even more impressive capabilities emerge. The future of strategic bombing is being written right now at Edwards Air Force Base, and it includes artificial intelligence as a critical component of American air superiority. If you found this breakdown valuable, hit that like button and subscribe for more in-depth coverage of American military aviation. Thanks for watching Jet Insight, and we'll see you in the next one.